Yeah, like it's the same. It's the same style of problem, but in a like you, can, you can't do uh like the square because they they're square root trinomial. Oh, because it's not a trinomial. Well, it's not a it's it's not a sum of squares, and, and there's no middle term for perfect square trinomial. Okay. Max equals square root of 400. And then let me get my calculator. Second square root of 20. And? Negative 20. Yes. Really important to get that second one. Very good. Uh, why don't you uh, work on number eight for us? Okay. Is it like 13? I feel like it's 13. Yeah, that's only half it though, half the solution. Yeah, plus minus 13. X equals plus minus 13, yeah. There's another kind of another way it could be presented. It could be like negative X squared equals, I don't know, uh, 100. This is also has no solution. Yeah, because you can't, because then you're taking the square yes. root of a negative X. And it's... Yes. All right, so number number 10, we're up to number 10 now. Um, so this one, you are... It says see example one. Are you allowed to have complex roots? Complex roots. With with I in it. Have you guys talked about that? No, we have not talked about I. Okay. So what do you say about this one then? Uh it'll be no real solution. Because once yes, you that's move correct. it to the other side. Yep. X squared equals negative six, no real solution. All right, uh, number 12, did you try solving, solving this? Okay. And then... So x equals plus or minus nine. Yes. Very good. Does 14, does 14 have a solution? I have an interesting one here. Uh, so, so what I, what, uh, what I make sure you do is get it to X squared equals and then decide, like, don't look at it in this form, always make it X squared equals to decide. Okay. Um, so then it'd be x squared equals x equals zero. X squared equals zero. Now that does have a solution. Yeah. That has one solution, right? It's it's plus or minus the square root of zero, but the square root of zero is just zero. There's not there's no such thing as a positive or a negative. So it is it is uh just zero. Okay. From what I've seen, your instructor likes to you know, be deceptive with problems. So they, they might look like they have a solution or not. All right, so this one here, again, you kind of got to get it down to x squared equals to something. x equals plus minus 10. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, go ahead and try uh, 18. You probably already know what to do on this one. Let me know if you have any questions on this one. I mean, it's a little different, but it it, it yeah. still works out okay. 
x equals plus or minus seven thirds. Yes. So if you can take the square to the top, you do it. Square to the bottom, you do it. And, uh, and so on. All right, so you said four to 24. The chat never really, yeah, four to 34. Okay, we're gonna keep going. All right, this is the first one where there's kind of a few more steps involved. Um, you take the square root of both sides like, like we've been doing. On the right, it's plus or minus the square root of four, which becomes plus or minus two. But on the left, you have x minus one. Now, this really becomes two equations. It becomes x minus one equals positive two, x minus one equals negative two. So when you when you undo the square root and you have a number or even just a root over here, you still have to break it apart, one for the positive case and one for the negative case. Okay. So you end up solving these uh, separately. So x minus one equals three and x minus. Well, well, you're adding one, so it becomes just x. X equals. Yeah, x, oh, sorry, x equals three. Yeah. Okay. What about the other one? Um, zero. X equals zero, good. All right, um, let's keep it going on here. 22, maybe try this one on your own since it's really similar. Take the square root of both sides, then you have to solve two equations. Okay. And then 4x plus 5 squared equals 9, 4x plus 5 equals plus minus 3. And then 4x plus 5 equals negative 3, 4x plus 5 equals 3. And minus 5, negative 8, so x equals negative 2, x equals I got x equals negative two and x equals negative one half. Okay, so again, we can we can x equals two. You said and x equals negative one half. Yeah. So we can we can always check. I think we're gonna have a problem here with one of them. Oh uh, no, that's just be negative two. Negative two and positive one half. And negative one half. And negative one half. Okay. Uh, all right. So yeah, the uh, so it's it's four times negative two plus five. You know, is that is that plus or minus three? It is. So that works. And then the same thing with the other one, four times negative one half plus five squared ends up being uh, three squared, which equals nine. Good. Any concerns over those or? Nope. All right. Why don't you try 24? This one, you have to do something before you take the square root. Could you take a look at that and see what you think you do before taking the square root? Snip that in here. Okay. Can't just take the square. Well, you can, but you really shouldn't. You should get it down to just x minus 2 squared equals 25 over 4 by dividing both sides by, by 4. Kind of gave it away there. But the idea is is you want to you want to uh, you want to get the that thing over there that number. Uh, x equals nine halves and x equals negative one half. Five halves plus two. Yeah, that sounds right. So this one would be harder to, to try and check your answer, but it's doable. So just, just keep that in mind. You know, the more the, the more complicated the answer, the harder it is to actually check it. So all right. Um number 26 looks like we're moving into 
root answers or calculator. Uh, it does say to round your answers. So whenever you, whenever you see something like that, that means you're going to use your calculator to do that. This time you're going to subtract 11 from both sides. X squared equals 13. X equals plus or minus the square root of 13. And you're going to use your calculator to estimate that to the nearest hundredth, which is two decimal places. Okay. So then. Find the square root button, hang on. Oh, there it is. Uh, three point six and negative three point six. Two decimal places. So decimal places oh, means to the right three, of the three point uh, six zero six. So what do you have? Six zero six. Yeah. So does that six cause the zero to round up or down? No, no, no. So it would be uh three point six zero five five, but then the five makes it round up to three point six zero six. It's only two decimal places. One after oh, two after. Okay. So then yeah, it'd be 3.61. Yes. Plus or minus. Yeah. Okay. So let's have you try 28 in the same way. Um, I like to solve it exactly and then go to the calculator. You could, for example, start with the calculator the entire time. But it, it would be better to work it out uh, that that's a square root I got plus minus uh, 0 0.89, 0 0.89. Very good. Okay, so that is everything from that page. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry, there's the other side. So 20 going to 30, all right. 30 is a rearrangement of problems we've been doing. Uh, so you're gonna you're going to solve for X the same way, you just this time you have It'll be on the right hand side. So no big deal there. You just add five, right? Seven equals four x squared. Sometimes I switch it so I get you know four x squared on the left. But when you divide by seven, it's four over seven, and then you take the square root of both sides. Always make sure you write that plus or minus. Okay. Oops, I'm sorry. It's seven over four. What a what a bad mistake. There's seven over four. Seven over four. And then X equals plus minus uh, one point three two. Okay, so you are, we're up to 32 modeling okay. with mathematics. Is that right? Yep. All right, let's take a look here. And then after we finish this, um, can we do word problems? Yeah, sure. All right, an in-ground pond has the shape of a rectangular prism. So uh, just a rectangle. The pond has a depth of 24 inches. So actually it's, I haven't drawn that one. Let me draw this differently. I didn't realize it was three dimensions. So, so let's, let's say that this is the depth of the pond. So the pond is 24 inches deep and uh, that's the depth and the length of the pond is two times its width. 
Okay, so we'll call this the length. The length is two times the width. There's the width. And they give you the uh, the total volume there. Yeah, I tell seven, you the total volume. Yeah. Seven seven two zero 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 equals uh two WL times twenty-four. Or two L. W times yes. Yeah. Times twenty-four. The the I was just giving you the L in terms of W, but you only want to use one variable. Okay, so then uh four W squared seven two zero 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 equals four or two W squared plus forty-eight W. So divide by 48 on both sides and then take a square root. Wouldn't it be 48W though? Because 2W times 24 is. Oh, you so can only wait. When you're multiplying, you just pick the two that you want to multiply. Wait, but then how'd you get 48W squared? W times W makes W squared. So you multiply all of them together? Yes, it's it's length times okay. width times height or depth. Oh, so it's not like foiling or anything like that. No, th there's no there's no plus minus operators in there. Okay. So then divide by forty eight. W squared equals. Fifteen hundred and W equals thirty-eight point seven three. And there's no negative because there's no negative in the real world. That's right. Now that's now that you gotta be careful here because that that's only part of the answer. Yeah, that's part. So then you have to find is a two times that. So then the that's length right. equals uh Double that. 77.46. Maybe some units, you know, inches and yeah. inches. Good. All right. Uh, so are we doing? All right. So I got to check the chat here again to make sure I'm, I know where we're going. Yeah. Four to 34. We've done that. Now we've got to do 36, 38 through 41, 43 through 44. I need to grab the next picture. And I have it. Uh, so just to confirm here, 36. Okay, bunch of pieces. All right, the area of a circle with radius r is given by the formula a equals pi r squared. They want you to solve this formula for r. So you divide by pi. So you divide by pi, so you get. I've done stuff like this. So it's a over pi equals r squared. So you get r equals the square root of a over pi. Like that, perfect. Okay, so that's that's part uh, part A. Part B is to use the formula that you just did, just calculated, and find the radius of each circle. So you're using this formula for each of these, and they're not going to work out nicely. So you're just you're just doing one for each. Okay. Yeah. So first one is 42.34. You have to take a square root. Oh. And so that's 6.51. So I got, yeah, I got, I got pretty much six. Are you rounding your intermediate result? I got 6.50655. Okay. Um, yeah, just it, are you using pi or 3.14? Pi. I'm using the pi. Okay. Button. All right. 
All right. Well, just just confirm it here. Um, go ahead and try the uh, next complete. And we need units. That's six feet. Yep. And then one eight one zero divided by pi. Second square second answer. I got twenty four. Okay. I agree. And what's the units on that? Inches. Okay. And then the last one there. Thirteen. Yeah, it's like they, they they chose thirteen meters. They chose numbers they knew would work out nicely. All right, uh, let's look at the last part here. It says to explain why it is beneficial to solve for the formula. Why it is beneficial to solve for the formula for R before finding the radius. What do you think? Oh, uh, it makes finding R easier. Uh, yeah, because you 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 can just substitute the number in for A each time rather than having to redo that calculation each time. Yeah. All right, great. So let's uh, let's look at 38 here. All right, so I'm snipping in 38 without the three parts, the A, B, and C. It says, given the equation A x squared plus C equals zero, describe the values of A and C so that the equation has the following number of solutions. So let's first, I want you to first solve this, solve for x, please. Okay, so then divide by A, or minus A, divide by C, divide by A, divide by C. Okay. So then it'd be negative C over A. Yeah, so x squared equals negative C over A. X equals the square root of negative C over A. Very good. Okay. Is that so, going to give us a rational number? Well, it depends. It depends on the values of, of A and C. Okay. So let's. So, so now in this case, you would have to plug it in. Well, we can we can look at it in terms of its sign. So let's look at two real solutions. Okay, so for this to have two real solutions, minus C over A needs to be greater than zero. Yeah. So it'd okay, be so, like I, so there's two possible, go ahead. It'd be like negative two over negative one. Right, so here's what you said. C is, um, uh, so C is greater than zero, A is less than zero. That's what you said. You, well, okay. you gotta be careful here. Like think think of a number less of greater than zero, like you said, like two, that gives you negative two here. And then A less than zero, that's like negative one, that works. But okay. there's another possibility here. There's another way to get it. What if A is positive? What if A what is if, positive? Yeah, what if the number on the bottom is positive? Then what does the number on top have to be? Positive. Or so negative. Did, so, it has to be well, negative. C has to be negative. Yeah. So you, like like these are the symbolic, but you these are the signs, you know, positive, negative. Okay. All right. Now the next one is one real solution. And this is when this is when uh, the part under the root equals zero. How do you make minus C over A equal to zero? Substitute zero in for both of them. You cannot divide by zero. Oh. You can't? Can you? Uh, well, can you divide by zero? Or maybe like make C equal to zero and that so A C, any so number? That's right. C equal to zero, A not equal to zero. A cannot be zero. It can be like you just said, anything but zero. Okay. When there's only one solution, is it typically zero? Uh, 
No, it, it does not have B. It, it just means it touches, it just touches the, uh, the X, Y. So like it just comes down and hits there or, you know, hits there. It doesn't have to be at zero. But is it commonly zero? Yeah, yeah, it is. Like, like that's the typical problem you'd see. All right, last part is no real solution. No real solution. So again, we're looking at minus C over A. This has to be less than zero. There are two possibilities for this. Okay. Um, so C, so then C would be positive and A would be positive. That's correct. Or C is negative and A is negative. Yes. Okay. Great. So that's 38. We're up to 39. Yeah. Okay. So we actually were doing some problems kind of like 39 the other the other day. Um, when they say without graphing, that means you can use substitution and elimination. Um, basically, you want to solve the equations. You want to set you want to set them equal to each other. Okay. So can you try solving this? So nine equals x squared, so then nine equals three, or x equals three. Is that the only point? Negative three. What is the y value at each of those places? Zero. Because it's eight or it's but oh, what wait. If you just nine. No, it has to be nine. nine. Yeah. Very good. All right, so number 40. Yeah, we're doing 40. How do you see it? The graph represents the function. This is what you were asking me just a few minutes ago. How many solutions does this equation have? Well, it has one solution, but it's repeated. Okay. If it touches, which is the case here, then it only has one solution. Okay. So then this would have one solution. One solution. It doesn't matter how many. Right? Yeah. Oh, is it, no, it's it, X minus one. So you'd have to. So, so what you're doing is you're setting X minus one squared equal to zero. Yeah. When you take the square root of both sides, it's just zero. So x equals one. So it'd be one solution. Yes. Yeah, I just sent you the work problems for uh when you oh, what about what about 41, 43, and 44? Yeah, no, we can do those too. Uh, those yeah. are just for after we finish okay. this. Sure. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So uh, it's just to solve this without using a calculator. If you need a hint, what is x squared equals 144? What is that yeah, solution? Yeah, so it's going to be, uh, it's going to be 1.2. Is that your only answer? Nope, plus or minus one. Yeah, if, if that's the if that's the only thing to take away from tonight is that there's always two solutions, even when they're repeated, it's two solutions. All right, uh, 43, 43 here. All right, an equation of the graph shown is y equals one half x minus two squared plus one. Two points on the parabola have a y coordinate of nine. Find the x coordinates of these two points. What that is saying is y is nine, y equals nine. All right, so okay. I'd like you to do like you did in a couple problems, go to set it, set it equal and uh, see what you come up with. See what uh, two ordered pairs you get. Okay.
Oh. Can I square root that first, or can do I have to subtract the one? I would subtract the one and multiply by two. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I got x equals two plus minus four. So that x would be six and then x would be negative two. So plug that back in. What were your two solutions? For x? Yeah, there's two solutions for x. Six, negative two. Yes. So x is negative two, x is six. What is the y value in each of those? I am looking for that right now. You're you're overthinking it. What's the y value? Oh, that's always gonna be nine. Yeah. Well, it's it's whatever. It it, it just happened to be y nine, but um, I plugged it in my calculator. Okay, so that's uh that's forty three. Forty four is coming up. Um. Okay. These would be potential completing the square type. At least part A is. Um, could also be something else. Uh, just depends on how you kind of how you see it. Um, okay. Why, what do you think? Why don't you complete the square? I mean, you were you were kind of on track for that the other night. This is uh, twenty eight. And it's going to be x minus 6, and then 28 plus 36 plus 28 plus 36, 64. So x minus 6 equals plus or minus 8. So x equals 14. I got x equals 14 or negative 2. Yes. Now, did, did you notice that once you completed the square, you got back to this, like you, you almost didn't need, you could have recognized that this is a perfect square trinomial. Yeah. So that you don't have to complete the square in that case, but you, you want to um, keep that in mind because the same thing applies to part B. Yeah, your, your answers are correct. So go ahead and try that for part, uh, part B and um uh, See what you come up with. Either use perfect square trinomial or, or completing the square. X plus seven. Yep. And then you get X plus seven equals four plus or minus four. So then X plus that's the X equals negative 11 and negative three. Got it. Okay. Any questions of that before we move on to your new problem sets? Nope. All right. Uh, so I am not seeing the new ones. Did you send those by email maybe? Yeah, by email. Okay. I do see that by email. All right. Um, we're starting at uh, 23. Right. The first one you can see, it's the top one you can't really see. But the second one on that page, the, can... the top one, if you have the if you have the uh, equation, we can do. Yeah, I have paper. So it says the... y equals negative nine x squared plus nine point eight x. Okay, just confirm that what's on the screen is correct. Negative nine x squared plus nine point eight. Yes. Okay. Great. How long does the pancake stay in? the air so actually i can't really snip a in so remember graphically yeah it's looking for point three yeah right over here so we're setting it equal to zero a couple of ways to solve this you can use quadratic formula which i don't recommend you could complete the square which i don't recommend i would do gcf factoring because yeah. at least at a minimum you can factor out an x from both yeah so then it'd be 
Um, so it'd be vector out probably negative x, right? Negative x is a good choice. So then it'd be negative x times uh, negative 9x or 9x. Minus nine point eight. Oh, and then that's that's so that x equals zero, and then x equals um, plus nine point eight divided by nine. Nine point eight divided by nine is one point one. One point one seconds. Okay, and that's maybe reasonable. Not really sure. I mean, it does. Uh, pancakes and then flip. To figure out at what times the pancakes stop going up, so then that's point two. Yeah. So then you want the to find the vertex and put it in vertex form. I, I would. I would use formulas here. Uh, completing the square is going to be really oh, tough. Oh, actually, negative b over two a. Yeah. Is that all you have to do for that? Or no, you have to put yes. that back in. That's that's the time. That's part b. Part C is to put that back in. Oh, okay. So then negative B, so negative 9.8 over 18. Divided by negative 18. Uh, five, uh, 0 0.5 seconds, 0 0.54 seconds. Okay. Notice it's halfway between where it started and hit the ground. Yeah. That's always the case. It's always the case. Now, uh, you said 0 0.54. Now, uh, part C is to determine the actual height of the pancake. So you're going to put that back into the original equation. Uh, two point seven feet or two point seven. Uh, it okay. doesn't give us any units. Of uh, height of the pancake, yeah. So two point seven. Have, yeah, and that really matters because feet versus inches could be a big difference. Flipping a pancake. Yeah, and then. Draw a sketch of the graph. So I'm assuming it probably wants like the kind of graph you just drew. Okay. Where... Yeah, exactly. Something like that. And then that point would be 0 0.54 seconds. And then the top point, the middle point has actually two, right? Because that's also where it starts coming down. So 0 0.54 seconds. Yeah, you, 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 yeah, exactly. You want to label that point as well. And, and then, then the last one would be 1.1. .1. Yes. Time, height, things like that. Yep. Good to, good to, there. Okay, so that's uh, that's it for that one. Uh, 23, I want you to look at part A and tell me, tell me uh, what it's asking for, I guess. From the it equation. wants point three, so then so y equals zero. Okay. So zero equals x squared minus ten x. So then, probably when does the softball hit the ground? I'm solving for x. I would recommend uh, using GCF factoring here because you can yep. at least take an x out of both. Equals x times x minus ten. So then, uh. 10 feet. So it's the ground 10. Yeah, 10 feet yeah. away. Okay, good. And then um, find the vertex negative B over 2A. So the negative 10 over negative 2 is 5, 5 feet. And again, notice that's halfway between. Yep. It's not always like that, though, right? It, well, it is, it is if it starts at zero. The, the vertex is always halfway between the intercepts. But but it doesn't always start at zero. That's right. And, and the intercept, it doesn't always have x-intercepts, so that also doesn't work. That's Where's good, the though. ball's That's... horizontal distance from James 24 feet up in the air? Does this make sense? 
it doesn't make sense because the vertex is five feet. Um, right? X is the horizontal distance in feet. So the question is, is does it does it ever reach 24 feet? No, because the vertex is five feet. Yeah. So when you no no, no you, you got to put five back in. Oh, so the negative twenty-five plus fifty is twenty-five. Yes. So that's so then, that's. So the question is, well, does it ever reach twenty-four feet? Yeah, it does. Um, so you're setting the equation in C, in C equal to. Oh, y equals negative two x plus ten x. Equal to twenty-four. So the, what's the y doing? Just. No, that is the y. Sorry, that is the y value. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I get it now. So negative. So go, x yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna move everything to one side. Probably move everything right to keep the x squared uh, positive, and then you will um, use some form of. Factoring. Oh wait, no, no, no. This can. This is a. Uh, I can factor this. So I'm actually gonna factor that. So negative x squared plus ten x equals negative 24, so that's to multiply to 24, but at the 10, so that's x minus 4, or x plus 4, x plus 6. So then negative 4, negative 6 is what I got for my x-intercepts. Okay, so notice that that it, it can't be, you got x minus 4, x minus 6 as your factors. No, yes, I got no, x maybe. plus four, x plus six. Okay, that, so the, this is where this is where it's really uh, um, it'd be really good to move everything to one side where it's positive, so it becomes x squared minus ten x plus twenty four equals zero. So, oh, okay. So then and it would be you, x minus. Okay. And that gives you so four and six. six and four. Okay, and that's that's okay. Um, I don't know why they keep asking if your data makes sense. Yes. I, I, I get it. it seems just fine to me. So, um, yes. I think you got it. So, I think you're seeing that there's, you know, really only, I mean, I call it three places. They rarely ask you anything about the first place. Um, they're either asking about the vertex typically or where it hits the ground. That's it. And, okay. Sometimes they ask for now, like what we're seeing as a fourth place. The fourth place is like where it hits. So that okay. would be uh, that would be kind of the other consideration here. So we probably don't have enough time to really get into twenty four, but it's exactly the same as the the problems we've been doing. You just have to um, figure out which one it's asking for and work it through. All right. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us for tonight. We do.